Show, look, show the mango. It's 150. And it's really good. It's very sweet. This is the setup that I have for making smoothies. I'm about to make a smoothie, so I want to show Hoop Journey, episode three, how I'm making a smoothie and what's going into it. If you're interested in doing something like what I'm doing in terms of getting in shape, you can know exactly what I'm doing. So you'll see what the results are. Here's what I'm using, a Vitamix blender. It's a, a Vitamix 5200. Here's the mixer. And then I've got a nice big container for the smoothie, some mango. All right, so here, here's what's gonna be going into the smoothie. This container has an incredible amount of nutrients. Here we have Greek non-fat yogurt. The purpose of this is basically for the protein. It's got zero grams of added sugar, 0% milk fat. Here I've got some spinach. I bought frozen spinach. I'm not gonna do that again. Uh, this is uh, thawed frozen spinach. And I'm just gonna get regular spinach uh, in the future and put that in the freezer. The gonna... real spinach from the roots to here. American grocery stores only like carry spinach leaves, but in Chinese grocery you get all this. Actually, this is the most nutrition part, the root. I don't know if it's called a root or what, but you get it. Almond milk, the original unsweetened kind. You really don't need a lot of sugar in these because we're using fruits, we're using juices, a number of different things that have strong flavors. So here we've got almond butter. This is just to give it a little more flavor. We've got orange juice that's going to go in there. I've got carrots and a berry blend. Uh, if I had bananas, I'd put some bananas in there. We put some mango in there already. We bought some fresh mangoes the other, uh, yesterday. And actually, I could put some avocado in there, which I think I will. I'll put some avocado. Some ginger. A little bit of ginger. You know, I don't know. Everyone has a different sense of taste and what they like. Between the ginger and the orange juice and maybe the almond butter or some peanut butter, that gives the smoothie a very strong flavor to the point that you're not really getting as much of an experience of, of the spinach or of the carrots or of other things that you might put in that you might not like the flavor as much of. We put them all in there. We blend it all up. Put it into this. I will also take some things like some turmeric. Next time I have a chance to go to the grocery store and actually buy real turmeric, I will. A multivitamin and a fish oil. And I've also been taking this. I wanted to try these out. It's supposed to be like a testosterone booster. I have no idea really the science behind this. I bought a whole bunch of different supplements that were being recommended by one of those like exercise gurus. One of those exercise gurus that like they're ripped and they're they're on that screen and they're like telling you you know what you need to do to get to get ripped like them and they're like oh all the you know all the things that the other people have been telling you it's wrong it's this but the thing that was uh, interesting about this particular one and why I decided to do it he gave away tons of information about supplements to take you know without selling you well I haven't seen much of an effect to be honest so I'm gonna I'm not gonna do that again all right we're gonna put it in and blend it up. Almond milk. So there's a couple things here. I go ahead and make them. Up. I don't worry about making them so thick. I just want to make sure that I get it where I can drink it. And I think it's pretty important to get a good blender. You you want to get a decent blender because to really break this stuff up and make it where it's really drinkable, it. it better it's much easier like the, the the bad blenders just don't do it Ta -da. I I immediately clean the blender right after I pour this out because if you don't it cakes on it get dries and it gets really hard to get off later so I just get it done right away all right the last step is just tasting it and testing it I, I'm I haven't made this combination before and I think it's gonna taste not that great to be honest
that's definitely drinkable. So, I can taste the ginger, it's got ginger in it, it's got spinach, it's got mango, it's got avocado, almond milk, berries. It's got tons of stuff in here. So this is super nutritious, it's gonna be filling, so I'm not gonna be hungry really much throughout the day just from consuming this, so. Cheers. I think the total cost of this thing was about, uh, I don't think it's more than 60. When you think about how big this is, which it is, it's a 12 foot by eight foot dry erase board calendar. To get that for $60 is insane. Home Depot has these panels that are basically dry erase board panels. They're eight feet by four foot for $13 each panel. So you have to have a way to, to transport them. All I did was use drywall screws to actually screw them in directly to the drywall. Then I ran tape. You can go to Walmart probably and get them, like glitter kind of tape. I ordered some on Amazon, and then I ordered some very thin, like one fourth inch width tape, just a black tape to make all the lines that you see. And then I just printed out letters for you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, glued those on, ran these tape lines, and then the glitter tape goes over the screws. This is part of my effort to be more efficient overall. I was thinking like, what should I do? Should I make a calendar that has, that has the whole month? Or should I do a daily calendar, a weekly calendar, or a how, how should I organize this? I decided to organize it based on the week. Every month going through and making a whole month calendar on here doesn't, it just seems like that's gonna be a decent amount of effort for not as much payoff as being able to organize each day and be able to see it vividly every time I walk in. And that's the key is just trying to make more things in my mind so I don't forget. Also there, there will be the reward of every time I finish something, I'll put a check mark next to it. Every day, you know, the satisfaction of getting to look and see how many things I actually got done that day. And then the bottom, I left some space. Yeah, for $60, you could do one of these. So the other thing is why make something so big? So we have calendars on the computer. At first glance, that might be more efficient. You know, that's how I've organized a lot of my stuff for a while. But what I've found is that it's, it's too small and it's just not present in my mind enough. I have to literally go in and open up the calendar app and then find the days and look through it. And it's just, it requires more effort to stay on top of everything just because it's not as visible. It's not as in my face. Going with something that's this big, every day that I walk into the studio, I'm gonna see everything that needs to be done. And well, I'll report back with how, with how effective that is. This is my recording studio. And so I'll have people coming in here over the course of time to record and do, and maybe take lessons and maybe do other things like that. So I don't want them to see my, my calendar so I took my green screen off of the back wall over there and instead I painted that green so that is now back there it is paint gamma sector green Disney paint and you can get it at Home Depot it cost me $21 to do that whole wall it works really well you want to get flat you want to get it's called flat which is the sort of the no sheen no shininess it still is gonna have a shine that the uh, fabric doesn't have the lighting is a little bit different less lighting but it works it's really effective if you if, as long as you're painting really evenly which isn't hard to do I took the green screen that I had and I actually hung it up here with some shower curtain stuff when I have people over I can just pull it across these metal poles that it's on I got from Home Depot for about three dollars or something each there's two two metal poles up there two of them they're connected there with uh, some PVC pipe that it's running inside and then there's a hook here to hold the middle of it so that it doesn't sag that way I can hide my my calendar when people come over to work it actually turns it into a nice staging area over the course of time I can probably figure out how to just turn this into a stage area where I can actually do sets I can actually do shows that could be really cool today is chest and back I've been doing P90X for about I think three weeks now, maybe three and a half weeks, and I've already lost about eight or nine pounds. And that's not just P90X, that's also revolutionizing my diet. Overall, I've been really good with my diet, and I've stayed basically right on with the exercise. Today, I wanted to demonstrate a little bit of exercise before I get started. What I want to show are these bands. What I want to show with these bands is how easy it is to use them, and how little space you need. I'm also doing this, there's no air conditioning in here. It gets, I'm in South Carolina, it gets hot, and it gets hot in here. I've got one fan 
that I just have it blow on me, and, and really I'm okay. And so it's, I would prefer air conditioning, but what I'm doing for right now with pull-ups, and I'm, I'm going to start doing pull -up, real pull-ups again probably before too long. I'm using every single one of the bands. This way I can change between exercises very quickly, but also the each band, the black band is 50 pounds, the green band is 40 pounds, the red band, band 30 pounds, the blue band 20, the yellow 10. When you put all of them together, it's 150. And so I was weighing in at 216 when I first started. I hadn't done a pull-up in probably a few years. So I could hardly do maybe two pull-ups. I could get, yeah, basically one pull-up and then that's about it. Now I'm at about three. But I don't think doing three pull-ups is really that great. I need to work my arms out more. So even if you know, I, that, that pushes me to my limit. Three just isn't, you need to, you need to do more. <laughs> so, I think. So, the bands let me do that. And so that's what I'm going to demonstrate right now. Is just coming down, and then using the bands. And, and actually, with the, a lot of the exercises with the bands, it's advantageous to go slow. So the slower you go, you're still feeling tension the whole way down and the whole way back up. There's a whole bunch of exercises you can do with these bands. You don't need a lot of space. Maybe the best part is that they're $40. When I use the bands, I wear gloves. I'm just using some gardening gloves. I know it looks ridiculous, but I just throw in these gardening gloves because when you're doing a bunch of these exercises, the bands kind of chafe a little bit. First day that I used them, I kind of wore a little bit of skin off, so put some gloves on. Let's say I want to do some tricep exercises. I take the red band, put it down, step on it with a foot, and then lean out, and then you can do these kickbacks. And then you can also step on, you can put loops in the band and step, where you step on the band or where you anchor your band, you, you anchor it closer to the handles, and that will give you more tension. And so there is some technique to be learned with using the bands to be more effective with them. So let's take, for example, if I step right in the middle on all of them, maybe I can do some curls ugh, that are, that works for the curls because the tension is right here. It's right in my, I'm, I'm already feeling the tension there. There's some other exercises where it makes, rather than use more bands, it makes more sense to use one heavier band and step out further. That way you get the tension lower. That's basically all to say, so far I think the bands do a good job. Dumbbells have their purpose. Uh, dumbbells provide the same amount of resistance no matter where you are. With the bands you have a varying amount of tension. Nice job. Scotty Pfeiffer on the bands. Making it work. Yeehaw. All, All right. Pull it down. Drop your hands to the floor. That's one of the nice things. Get on your knees. I'll get sideways so you can see me here. Hands under the shoulders. Knees under the hips. Inhale the head up. I'll chin this in a second. Maybe I want. Synchronize the breath with the motion. Exhale, chin down. The cool down phase is nice because you've done with everything and it just feels great to, to relax and just kind of loosen up. This was chest and back. And exhale, coming into your spine. And exhale, everybody sit right down on your heels. Now I'm going to work on recording Get a your song. Arms out. Feel the big old stretch. Slide, slide. Both hands over to the left. Place the right hand on top of the left hand. So, you should feel this from your hips. I just made this calendar, which is in this episode of, of Hoop, Bobby, this way more. the Hoop Journey, and I'm going to pause slide this. There, Johnny Stiff. Good. <laughs> Other side, everybody. The calendar needs to be filled out. I worked on it a bit yesterday. Yesterday was the first day I've been working on the, on actually putting stuff on the calendar. So I'll work on that more today, I'm trying to figure out if an efficient schedule, something that keeps me focused and getting a lot done, while also not uh, like I don't want to lock myself so rigidly into a schedule that doesn't really work for me. Uh, so that's the thing I gotta kind of it's gonna I think it will take a little bit of time maybe I'll just 
figure it out right away, that would be great. But it might also take a little bit of time just experimenting with different tasks and figuring out what is the most efficient and effective for me. Today, I've got the chest and back, and then I'm gonna work on my new song. I've got the chest and back, and then I've gotta work on my new song, how, can, how I Can Say Goodbye. And I'm gonna work on a full version of that with drums and bass and guitar and, and whatever different instruments that I can hear and, and get inspired to create, see what I can come up with today over the course of four hours this morning. And then eat lunch sometime around 12 p.m. I try to keep my lunches short, so I'll make a sandwich and eat that. It shouldn't take me much more than 15 minutes. Definitely gonna take some 15 minute breaks here and there. Maybe go out and shoot a basketball. Uh, I gotta study Mandarin then reach out to venues for, for an hour. Right now we're going through coronavirus. So, uh, like right now in South Carolina, the, the last time I checked it was 1,600 new cases per day. Uh, it was the most recent new case rate. And the trajectory seems to be going up. And from what I've heard from my wife's family who's in medicine in China, there's a 20% chance if you catch the disease that you have permanent lung damage. So. I feel like I need to take that seriously, and but I'm also getting to the point where, uh, when I'm looking at the, when I'm when I'm looking at the numbers that are actually occurring in the United States, it doesn't look like it's that that much of a risk. But you know, it's been hard to kind of evaluate information and figure out what's the right thing to do here. I see a lot of a lot of musicians are back to work and don't seem to be getting sick, although maybe it's a matter of time. But also, in terms of the the number of confirmed cases versus the number of deaths in any county in, in South Carolina. I forget the exact number, it's really low. Um, so, I'm gonna reach out to venues, and uh, but what I'm gonna be doing is booking further out, and then practice covers, and I've gotta practice these as well. I've added some to the calendar, specific songs to work on. I figured this would be good to just have in my mind, and, and then this is my sort of to-do list of just if I find pockets of time where I need to take a break from what's up here, then I can look down here and say, is there something else here that I'd be more motivated to do? And, and I do that. Or just things to keep track of so I don't have to keep them in my head. Upcoming gigs. I wanted to put this primarily for private events. So I, it's, it's always in my mind of what's coming up. Because a lot of times for private events, I have specific songs that I have to learn. And or just things to keep in mind about the way the event's gonna be. And so I wanna have myself mentally prepared and, and not letting anything fall through the cracks of my mind and memory. So that's, that's what that's for. We've got on Thursday, we've got Thursday Morning Live, starts at 9 a.m. from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. On my, on my Facebook and on my YouTube. Noah Grove Sound on Facebook, Boba T. Fett on YouTube. If I get 100 subscribers, I'll change it to Noah Grove or Noah Grove Music. I can't change it until I get 100 subscribers. On Fridays and Saturdays, until coronavirus is gone, I'm gonna start doing what I'm calling my Corona gig, which is just the, the typical hour. 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. is a pretty standard three hour gig at a bar and restaurant, really around the country. So I'm gonna do those on Fridays and Saturdays until I'm start being booked again on the regular, just so I'm staying in performance shape. I've got a wedding. It's an outdoor wedding, small number of people. I'm gonna be wearing protective gear and uh, only taking my mask off to sing. That's gonna take most of the whole day because it's about a two hour drive. E-Open Mic is coming up. You can find that E-Open Mic handle at basically all social media, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and that is Eastern Daylight Time. That's about it. I, I don't think I'm gonna put some basketball in this in this video. I'm gonna edit this and, some, and upload it, but I'll do more basketball video in the next one. But I figure I wanna, especially for these first ones where I'm not really playing actual basketball with other people, and I'm not filming that because I think that'll be far more interesting to watch. Um, I wanted to sort of show what is happening in my road to getting there, where I'm getting myself into competitive shape. Uh, and that includes my scheduling, and that includes my diet, and that includes my exercise routine. So far, so good. I'll see you in the next one.